Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 104. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Please stand for hymn number 251.
morning. How are you? Good. So, is everyone still in school? Sevastopol's out. Happy Sevastopol. Yay. <laughs> is Southern Door out? No? Oh, my goodness. Well, it seems like it's gone on for a long time today. Well, school is a uh, proper topic for a children's message this morning because today we are honoring our high school graduates. And that are, those are those four people that are sitting right there today. Now, does anybody want to venture a guess how old do you have to be to graduate from high school? Here we go. 20. 20? <laughs> well, close, Johnny. Usually 17, 18, somewhere, some, somewhere in that thing. So how old do you think? Oh, my goodness. You were at the party yesterday. Oh, that's wonderful. All right. How many books do you think you have to have read? And now we're not talking comic books, but how many book books, real books, do you think you have to read to be able to graduate from high school? 1,000. 1,000. Anywhere close to that? No. Maybe, yeah. A couple of you. Okay. Um, what do you think, what is the longest paper you have to write to graduate from high school? Longest paper? How many pages? Do you think? Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? 12 pages. Pretty accurate? Oh, that was pretty good. Okay. Well, you know, the thing is, is that we can think about all the things that somebody has to do to get ready to graduate from high school. Um, and part of it is hard work, and part of it's just survival. <laughs> they laughed. But um, in the life of our church, it's very, very important. Today is a very important day because one of the things that we uh, means so very much for us is that we want to make sure that the young people that have grown up in the life of our church know how much we love them, that they know how much um, we uh, have had joy in all the things that they've accomplished, and this group of young people have accomplished a lot of really good things, but, and how much we want them to have success as they go forward and do the things that, that God is calling them to do in the dreams in their lives. So how about you join me, and we're going to offer a prayer for them, okay? Here we go. Lord, we thank you for our high school graduates this year. We pray that your blessing will be upon them. We are so grateful for all the ways that they um, have and continue to be a blessing in the life of their families and of this church. And uh, Lord, we uh, pray that you will be with them as they move forward to accomplish the great things that you are calling them to do in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for all coming up.
So uh, Matt's going to talk to our graduates and about our graduates um, here, I'm sure, in just a, a few minutes here. But uh, this is my chance to uh, say something. And, you know, you're one of the smallest classes that we've ever had, smallest graduating classes. But what uh, you've lacked in size, you've made up for in quality. And I just want you to know that I've been proud to know you and proud to have you here in the church. And I hope that wherever your life's pathways take you, that you'll come back and see us whenever you can. Would our ushers please uh, wait on us as we worship our Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
Gracious Lord, we bring you our gifts of thanks this morning. We are particularly mindful that this is Graduate Sunday. We give you thanks for the blessings that these young people have been to our church and in our community. We ask that you be with them and you guide them for the remainder of their lives. In the prayers of the people this morning, we hold the family of William Worley, whose funeral was held at Shiloh on Saturday. We also ask that you be with Ross Dippel and his family as his mother Nita passed away this last week. Also, we would ask for healing and comfort for Carolyn Breidenhagen, who is in the hospital, and for Karen Seiler, Jim Sarkis, and Anna Keneally, who are undergoing treatment for cancer. We ask that you would be with all those who are ill or are suffering, that you would bring them peace, healing, and comfort. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. scripture reading today is from John 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord.
If there's ever a good Sunday to honor your graduates, it is Pentecost. Because if you'd ever looked for any event in scripture that's the most like graduation, it would certainly be this experience in the upper room that Tracy just read about. You know, the disciples had had their education. They had their time with Jesus where he, they had lived with him, worked with him, walked with him, and been taught by him. But the time came after his death and resurrection that it was time for them to move forward. And so they were cooped up in this room and they were filled with fear and the Holy Spirit came. And we know from the rest of the story that when that spirit came, they went forth into every corner of the world to do the good deeds that God had called them to do. And so it is so appropriate that we have that in our minds as we gather here today. I have to confess to you, uh, more often than not anymore, when I stand up here and I am baptizing an infant and I'm walking around the aisles and I'm showing that baby off to everyone, I, I end up thinking about this Sunday. I do. Because one of the things that is so special and profound is the idea that, that as a family brings forth that child to the commitment to be raised in this church family, that, that as I'm walking around those aisles, I'm thinking about, well, how many times will they walk up and down these aisles to come up to children's message? And how many times will they run up and down these aisles to go to the bathroom at an inappropriate time that their parents really aren't happy with them? How many times will they run up and down these aisles in the dark looking for someone who's hiding or trying to see if there are ghosts in the sanctuary? How many times they will come up and down these aisles? You see, there is a connectedness and a continuity in a life of faith. We love our children from the day that God gives them to us to every step along the way. And every once in a while, there are days like today that are milestones and that we need to step back and thank God for the blessing that our young people are in our lives. The purpose of this service every year is twofold. The first is that we are giving thanks to God for the blessings that he has showered upon you, each one of you, in your faithfulness and your journey of life and his faithfulness for you. It's a time to remind you that you are loved beyond measure and to celebrate this milestone in your life because you're getting ready to write a new chapter, and that's an exciting time. For the congregation, the young people that you see before you, as Reader said, certainly are not the biggest class that has sat up here over the years, but we have to tell you it is the quality. Each one of these young people have made a tremendous impact in the life of their church family and are so precious to their families and their friends. Among these four, you will find scholars and athletes and artists and musicians and a host, a host of talent. They have been active in every aspect of this congregation as well as the places that God had called them to use their talents in our community in service and fellowship to others. And so we want to take a few moments to say a few words about each of them individually. It's not easy to do this. <laughs> there is so much that could be said as we gather together the stories of our lives along the road. So um, please know that the things that I share are just, just a little bit, hopefully, that communicate the love that we have for all four of you. I'll do it alphabetically, so that means Trey, yeah, you're off the hook first. <laughs> Trey, from the very beginning of your coming to church, it's always been obvious that you, you get church. You get God. You understand what we are about. There has not been a thing in the life of this congregation that you have not tried to engage and be involved in. And Trey, the thing that is so wonderful for us is that you are a young man who you are admired by your friends and the adults who know you. And this is because of the attitude that you bring in life. It's because of the way that you treat people. We have uh, had some amazing adventures together. I promise Trey, we always have the saying, what happens in Jamaica stays in Jamaica. <laughs> but it, one of my favorite experiences with you, I think, speaks to your spiritual connectedness and also your leadership. It was on a night in New York City. We'd been up serving in a dinner in a soup kitchen, and it had been a long day. We'd been on a bus 
the whole night before we had to get all the way up into Manhattan. We went to this place, and it's, it's a rough place. It's not an easy place to be. We have to take the best and most experienced of our young people to, to tackle what was going on. And so we were slogging it back to the ferry, and we were all very tired. And when we got to the ferry, Trey gathered everybody in the group, and he said, I want you all, when you get on the ferry, to follow me. And they all looked at him, and so the gate opened, and he led them up all the way to the very top, to the very back of that ferry. And he said, I want you to go sit down on that bench, and I want you to be quiet. <laughs> and they're looking like, what is going on with Trey? Well, he knew what he was doing. Because as that ferry slowly pulled away in the dark, away from the Manhattan skyline, it grows and grows and grows. And in that moment, in that moment, you had this spiritual experience. And Trey had had that experience before. And he wanted to make sure that no one else missed out on that opportunity. And so, Trey, I urge you to stay true to Christ's voice inside of you. Keep leading. Keep doing those good things. And I hope that you find the ghost in the sanctuary. <laughs> Maria has never been one to jump up and wave a flag about herself. In fact, Maria, I know sitting up in front of everybody is pretty painful for you right now, so I want you to know you get stars in your crowns for this. But one of the things is about you, Maria, is that you have quietly used your gifts to serve other people so faithfully, and particularly in the, lives of this, the life of this church. You've probably logged more hours in this church, I think, than any kid I know. Because you come in on Wednesday nights, and not only were you doing your homework, but you were making sure the decorations were getting done for Bible school and looking after all kinds of different things. You, you know, folks, we have a discipleship retreat every year, and at the last night of that retreat, the kids get up and they get to share a talent. So they tell a joke, or they sing a song, or mostly they just do things that would really, really embarrass them if we put them on videotape. But I'll never forget, because Maria got up, and she said, you know, you guys, I just want to show you my sketchbook. And she opened up her sketchbook and started opening the pages of all of her effort and the incredible artwork and how thrilled her classmates were to be able to share that. You know, so I got thinking about that, and today, you may not see what this is. It's a fish. It is a fish. I want you to know... This fish has been patiently worked on by Maria for what, four years now. It started off as a project for some middle school kids who couldn't, couldn't uh, get very far with it. And so for four years, Maria would come in periodically on a Wednesday night, and she would heat up crayons. You could smell them through the whole place. And she would begin to paint this incredible, beautiful piece of art. And so when everybody else had to kind of give up on the project, she still kept going. And so we have this thing before us that is absolutely beautiful, yet the neat thing, Maria, is it is unfinished. And that, as an artist, you know, is one of the curses and the joys of art, is that you can take something to a, a certain point, but in the life of your church family, it's time for you to go off to school, and you're going to have to lay this aside, and you're going to have to trust someone else to come along and finish it. Maria... Please know, please know that your calling by God is to reflect his beauty in this world. And you do that not only with your artistic talent, but you do it with the person that you are and the faithfulness that you show to your family and your loved ones and your friends. And so we cannot wait to look forward to see what you will create. I want to say a few words about Carolyn Mickey. She's not here today. Um, Carolyn, first of all, anyone who knows Carolyn knows that Carolyn is going to do great things in the world because she's faced a challenge before her just growing up in life that would make anyone be fabulously talented. She had to survive as the little sister of CJ, Christian, and Chase. <laughs> and so we know that Carolyn is going to do great. She has been an inspiration throughout her high school years on the basketball court. She's been involved in mission trips. She is a person who has a very good heart and is filled with kindness. And we're so proud of her accomplishments and the things she's going to be doing in the years ahead. Now to Miss Jamie. 
Jamie Olson holds the distinction of being the only person in my tenure as pastor of this church that went through discipleship training twice. That's right. She went through confirmation class twice. Now, please note, this is not because Jamie did not get what she needed to get the first time. No. It's because the character of her love. A big sister who loves a little brother. And so when Austin, it came time for him to take the class, Jamie came in to be there with him to go through his discipleship training and so that he would have the best possible experience that he could have. And so for a year, I'm still amazed at this, for a year, she sat through the screechiest, loudest, most frantic experience imaginable with a class of people who were very, very um, energetic. Would that be the word? And I would love it because every single week... <laughs> In the middle of somebody being really, really dramatic and over the top, Jamie would look at me across the table and she'd say, we were never this bad. (laughs) Jamie has been as good as gold. You know, Jamie, we've been so blessed because you, um, as a young person, found your voice. It's a voice that God gave. And you've used it so powerfully in so many ways. And so many times, not just here in the sanctuary, but out in the community, people have been blessed by that voice. But that voice has to come from a heart that is good and a heart that is filled with love. And you have that heart. And so I encourage you to keep that love of Jesus in your heart and remember, remember that as you fly wherever it is that God will take you, we will always be your biggest fans, and always want to be there for opening night, wherever it might be. And finally, Miss Mackenzie Roberts. You know, you never have a hard time finding Mackenzie in the church building, because uh, all you got to do is listen for the laughter and the joy and all the activity, and, you know, you'll find Mackenzie. Mackenzie, when she needs to be, can be very loud. That's because she was raised in a pool. You have pool voice, Mackenzie. I can hear you from a mile away. But you have brought so much joy, so much laughter. There is uh, absolutely not a single time on mission trips or opportunities to serve in the community that uh, it has not been a better experience because of the person that you are and what you have brought to it. And that humor has served you well. Um, I will never forget, we were having, spending a very, very hot day in Jamaica trying to paint the side of a building. And there was a group of Jamaican boys who were desperately trying to get Mackenzie's attention. <laughs> they wanted her so badly to leave that paintbrush behind and come over to the fence and flirt with them. And I wish all of you just could have heard the tirade that came forth as Mackenzie was trying to explain to them in, no, in very simple terms that her coming over there would be a really bad decision on their part. <laughs> in addition, back, I also know that you are kind and have a kind and faithful heart and a ton of love, and you're very, very faithful. I know this because you have shown me that love. During the darkest moment of my life, you sent me a card that I periodically pull out and I read. And it reminds me of what incredible love that we have in Jesus and how you would share that with me. I would never imagine such wisdom and compassion coming from somebody who's having so much fun all the time. I hope you know how proud we are of you and how you bring joy to your friends and your loved ones and that God has always been in your life and he will always be there for the journey ahead. I'd like to invite the congregation to join me now in recognizing our high school graduates. I'd also like to just take a moment um, that you'll see in the bulletin today, also there are a few of our young people who have graduated from college this year. And um, as important as high school is, each step of the way is, becomes more and more important. 
And so I just want to make mention of those young people and, and their accomplishments. Mackenzie Birmingham, who graduated from the Columbia College with a degree in musical theater, and she is busy this summer with internships down in Chicago, following her passion for the theater arts, and also doing what all actors do, working like crazy so she doesn't starve to death. <laughs> we have a double header <laughs> from the Baumgartner family. Anna graduated this spring with a degree in, in not-for-profit community management. And Hannah, we're so proud because that is such a wonderful professional way to make a difference in the world. And so we're very, very proud of you as well. And then finally, Joshua Hembel, he's not here today, but he graduated with his degree in mechanical engineering. And I can't wait to ask him. I haven't had a chance to do this, but, but did they teach him how to use a slide ruler? I, I'm still wondering. I'm probably not anymore. But, but so Josh is, Josh is looking for work um, and uh, certainly has many opportunities ahead of him. So let's honor our college graduates as well. At this time, I'm going to step aside as we join together in, in offering a prayer of celebration and thanksgiving and reflection, which is found in our liturgy for graduates in the, in the uh, liturgy booklet. You find the liturgy for graduation on page A91. Please stand. We praise you, Lord. We give thanks to you with our whole heart. We are your works, full of honor and majesty, and study by all we delight in them. The works of your hands are faithful and just. Your precepts are trustworthy. Our reverence for you is the beginning of wisdom. gift. We praise you for the wisdom, power, and love displayed in the natural universe and in humanity, whom you have placed within it to care for it and nurture it. All glory to you, Light of the world, we praise you for being the eternal truth. All glory to you, Christ our teacher. Revealer of the deep things of God, we praise you for your gifts of awe and wonder, which lead us on the path of true wisdom. All glory to you, Holy
Some of you as parents and teachers have been instrumental in their growing, teaching and sharing with them your beliefs and knowledge, moments of encouragement and growth, and experiences of the responsibilities of life. have learned and grown. Soon you will celebrate your accomplishments as a class of young adults. We pray that you will remember our witness and sharing, that you will develop your skills for the betterment of this world, and that you will witness with us what you have received from the Lord. There is a promise God has given that he will be with us to the close of the age, that he will be our God and we his people, that nothing except our rejection of him can keep us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. knew you. While in your mother's womb, God named you. At your birth, God's breath filled you with life. Today, we celebrate what you have become at this moment in time. And so we pray. God, God our our names. Names. we thank you for the gifts of these graduates, their excitement, their awesome wonder and curiosity, their open speech and encouraging words. Your contributions have blessed and challenged us, and we have become a richer, more diverse community of that As they step forward into the world of their ways, comfort their fears with the full knowledge of your divine. 
God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.